In this video, I am going to share with you guys seven model car collecting mistakes that you should not make, especially if you're brand new. Let's take a look at what these beginner mistakes are starting right now. Number one, not doing enough research. Jumping into the collecting hobby with not doing research when it comes to brands, scales, pricing, take the time to educate yourself, get yourself familiar with what this hobby is about because it's a lot different from some of the other die cast stuff that you've done in the past, especially when you're trying to make a leap from Hot Wheels to this one. But there's a ton of resources out there such as the Model Cars Houston YouTube channel. And you can also join Facebook groups and just involve yourself with the community so that you are surrounded by more people that know about it. So just take the time, educate yourself, figure out what appeals to you before you make your purchases. Number two is overlooking the condition of the model car. Now this is more in terms of like, let's say you buy a brand new model car, you don't check it, maybe it's been a week, two weeks, three weeks, you finally get a chance to open it, look inside and the decals are crooked. Maybe it's missing something. Maybe the side view mirror is broken off. Maybe the spoiler is missing. So just be sure that when you get the model cars, make sure you inspect it as soon as possible. And then make sure that you get with your reseller or wherever you bought it from and find out a best way to resolve the issues. And this is great for customer service and then you also being able to take care of that problem right away and not waiting until it's outside of the return period, warranty period, whatever you wanna call it. Number three is ignoring authenticity. So authenticity, is it legit? Is it not? Is it licensed? Is it boo boo? When it comes to dealing with limited editions, rare collectibles, and high end stuff, you wanna make sure that it's the real deal. Just make sure that you're buying from legit sources because there are scammer websites out there as well that you gotta be careful about. Ask questions, look through the website, make sure it's all legit before you make your purchases and don't end up wasting your money and time. Number four is impulse buying. Now in this hobby space, it is super critical that yeah, you wanna get in on that model car right when it drops, especially if it's a pre-order and especially if it's super limited in production runs and it's a special event that model. But sometimes buying model cars on a whim could result in you getting a model car that you didn't even want in the first place, all because of the hype. A lot of this happens with the brands that are boo boo, like Time Micro and things like this. They try to create hype on limited quantities and hey, we're making this die cast that, you know, is everyone's fan favorite. But you come to find out that this isn't even legit. It's not licensed by Fast and Furious. It's not licensed by any of the automakers. And maybe develop a focus guide for yourself to figure out, okay, what is it that I like? You know, do I like this brand? Do I like certain makes of models? And also, do I like certain scales? And also maybe a price point. So figure that out before you jump in. Number five, take a look at the packaging. Now, when I talk about the packaging, I'm talking about like the acrylic case, the cardboard outer slip box, things like this. If you're very particular on that, these are things that you wanna look at beforehand and in advance. Make sure that the model cars are brand new. Sometimes these model cars come in saran wrapped packaging. If that's broken and you're receiving something like that, then you're definitely getting something second hand. So just make sure. And definitely do not throw away that original packaging. It's critical that you Keep that original packaging because it helps with the authenticity of the model car and let people know that you've got something legit. Number six is neglecting storage and display. Now, getting a ton of model cars is one thing, but trying to figure out how you want to properly display it is another. Ikea is famous for the detolf shelving, which to me, it's a good looking shelf and you can put lights in it and make it look super professional and you can get multiple ones, that way you can display them all at one time. Having stores in display really has an enhanced effect when it comes to displaying these model cars, especially when you can definitely show off their high quality details, their precision, and just their overall attention to detail. But also make sure that you know they're in a climate controlled environment. Make sure that you try to eliminate it from gathering any dust by putting it in a case that's sealed and no dust and bugs could get inside. Overall, just make sure that you're protecting your investment and showcasing it in a way where it definitely has a big impact and makes you feel good about the model cars that you have in your collection. 
And number seven, and last but not least, is budgeting your model cars. Now, I've mentioned this many times in other videos, but budgeting is super important because you don't wanna get caught spending too much money or spending money that you should not be spending on this hobby. Yes, everyone should have a hobby, but it's also equally important that you spend within your means. Now, the good thing is that you can sometimes sell these model cars, get your money back, or maybe even make a little bit more money depending on the rarity or the demand of that model car. But this hobby can be super expensive. And no, I'm not talking about the Hot Wheels that are a dollar that somebody has 10,000 pieces of. But these individually range anywhere between 10, 15, 20, up to 100 for even 64 scale stuff. And then some of the bigger scale stuff gonna be even more expensive. So set a budget for yourself and don't overspend. That way you don't have any buyer's remorse. And there you have it. Those are the seven worst model car collecting mistakes that you can make as a beginner. And let me know down in the comments if there's anything that I may have missed and we can all talk about it. If you enjoyed this video, there are a couple of more beginner videos in the next slide that you can check out. I'll see you in that video or my next videos.